Greetings and salutations folks and welcome once again as always to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today with Mrs H. Hello. And little Toby James. And we've come to Warrington today, haven't we Mrs H? Have, yeah. And we're standing in the shadow of four of the eight cooling towers that belong to Fiddler's Ferry Power Station, which is now decommissioned. It was decommissioned in 2020 and it's scheduled for demolition sometime this year. Now with a bit of luck, they'll release the dates of when they're going to blow these bad boys behind us and I'll be able to bring little Toby James to take a look at them just as I was taken to watch the demolition of Westwood Power Station cooling towers way back in 1989. Now these rise 374 feet in the air, Mrs H. Yeah. And they've been here since 1971. They constructed the power station between 1969 and 1971, so they got it up pretty quick, didn't they? They did. We wouldn't do that now, going up that fast. Did you know, though, that one of these cooling towers actually collapsed in 1984? No. Yeah, it's the one that you can't see. You can just see it peeking out there. Now, this is the closest we can get to them because this site is buttoned up, basically. There's security on there. And funnily enough, Mrs H, it's a little bit of a connection to us. Do you remember Mike, my best man? Yeah. Which isn't Mike who's features in my videos. His brother-in-law is actually the head of security on there. Ah. I don't think he'll let us go on there. I've not spoken to him for years. So before anybody inundates me with loads of messages, can you get us on there? I don't think I'll be able to. This is the closest we can get. I wonder when they're going to blow, Mrs H. I'll, I'll imagine about August time sometime. Yeah, it'll be when we're away or something like that, won't it? You just know it's going to happen. No, in her look, yeah. But yeah, back in 1984, one of these collapsed. And what happened? It happened on Friday the 13th, believe it or not, in January. And what happened was the wind, this, this area was battered by a bit of a freak storm, and the wind hit one just right, and it sucked all the air out of the cooling tower, and it collapsed in on itself. Huh? I'll put some photographs in for you now of the devastation that it caused, and you'll be able to see that it's lucky, really, no one got killed. Now what is amazing was one of the uh, workers went running into the control room, into the main building, and actually said to them, one of the towers has collapsed, and they just laughed at him. But surely they must have felt it when it came down. Yeah, you think it's grounded shake, when you are these things dropping. But yeah, these are the, the cooling towers, and they've dominated the skyline here in Warrington for so long. But they are in a bad condition, these Mrs H. Yeah, but I know we, we've had a look before and zoomed right in, and maybe put a photo in. They're not as well built as they was over at Westwood, but I am going to say that, aren't I? Because <laughs> they was right near us. You can actually see right at the top there. I don't know if you can zoom in, Mrs H. Now, if you look real close up towards the top, you can just see daylight through there. So they are in a poor condition and they probably do want bringing down. And it looks like they've been patched up in various places as well, doesn't it? So, yeah, it probably is better that they bring them down, to be honest. I wonder if they'll blow them one at a time or whether they'll stay just as they all come down at the same time. It'd be magnificent if they do. I bet health and safety won't allow it, they'd have to do one at a time. They have done it in the past. They have brought uh, cooling towers on coal fire power stations down all together sometimes. But this, we're, we're currently on a car park, aren't we, to a little Indian restaurant? We are. Look how close this place is. What he wants to do in. It's putting a curry on or something, do not it? Yeah, ready for it. Ready for it. I bet they'll have to shut because the dust. They, they will, they'll have to shut. It's too close, that. I mean, if you just give me the camera, I'll just show you how close these are. And with a bit of luck, I should be able to zoom in. And you can just see the legs there. That's a closer look at the legs of one of the cooling towers. And this is how close we are to them. Be a shame to see them go though. Right now, what we're going to try and do, there's lots of sort of access roads into this 
power station complex. We're going to see if we can get a little bit closer and round the other side and take a look at the cooling tower that actually collapsed and see if you can see if it's been built later because they rebuilt it in 1985 and they fired it up straight away as soon as it came down more or less which is pretty good going when you come to think about it. <laughs> So we'll do that now, we'll make our way off here and we'll, we'll see. I'm not going to try and get on because by all accounts the uh, police are pretty hot on people getting on there because they've been stealing cable and things like that. It's not the 80s anymore Mrs H, you can't go where you want sadly. Right, we'll do that now and uh, then we'll wrap this video up from there. Well up Potters, we've made it to this little access road and they've not fenced it off so we'll see how close we can get to the actual towers from this side. Uh, the ones that you can just see in the distance there, those are the south towers. Because it's like a mirror, that's how they built it. So those are the south towers and the north towers that we was just in front of, are hidden behind these trees here. Now I believe all this is a nature reserve, so we might be able to peg our spot out for when they actually blow them, Mrs H, you never know. Come on, let's crack on because he's itching, go. So we're now down this path, aren't we Mrs H, making our way to uh, these cooling towers hopefully it'll open out into a clearing because i believe that this is supposed to be a nature reserve all this area huh? although they're going to build on some of this they're actually building on green belt land which isn't good i think they're going to put about a thousand homes on the site more homes so this is just what we need where are all these people coming from for these homes they need to start building schools to go with the homes well that's what the good people of warrington are saying because they're also on about building industrial areas you know, were houses, yeah. and the people of Warrington aren't happy. They're really not, but it's just the way it goes. That's the modern world, sadly. But with a bit of luck, we'll be able to come to a clearing. Now, way back in 1989, little story, I did put this into a previous video, and I'll put a link up to the video where I revisit the, the old power station site at Westwood. I'll put that link up for you now. Now, in that video, I actually talk about how me and my father got over there because the actual day that they blew the cooling towers and they'll probably do the same with these they shut it all off Mrs H you can't go on any public footpaths huh? so me and my dad we left it pretty late because we lived close to it as you know at the time and we went down and uh, this, this bobby jumped up excuse me chaps where are you going so my dad very fast on his feet with that I'd have just gone Ugh. My dad, he just said, oh, we're just visiting a relative's grave over in Westwood Cemetery, which is pretty close. And he just said, yeah, okay, well, don't make your way over there. Just follow the public footpath and be careful. As soon as he got out of sight, shot straight over. I said, my daddy used to always think fast on his feet like that. Right, we'll push on through here. Hopefully, it'll open out into a clearing soon. Because I know, Mrs H, you don't like bugs and things, do you? This is not your ideal. Absolutely hate countryside. Do you prefer the seaside? Yes. Right, Hot Potters, well, unfortunately, we can't get to where we was wanting to go, can we, Mrs. H? We can't now. We've worked out, because I've seen some photographs on Google Earth of people pretty close, just been sort of power stations been there in front of them, and there's been nothing in front. We've walked along, and it's all this sort of fencing, isn't it? It is, there's nowhere to get through. So what we think they've done, we think they've gone over this bridge, and I am not doing that. Well, bits of that fence on that side have been cut out, haven't they? So yeah, they've probably yeah. cut through there, gone up over the bridge. Uh, what that is, I don't know myself. I know that they was getting called from South Yorkshire at one time, prior to all the pits being closed. And they had what they call a merry-go-round system in place where they would just ferry call to the power station and then send them back. And it was basically on a loop. And I think that is the old access yeah. for train tracks to get in and I think that's how people have been getting in but we're definitely not doing that no. certainly not with a little one and because it's still classed as a power station site you can actually be prosecuted so uh, we ain't risking that one what we have seen is a little clearing it isn't as close as I wanted to be but we can take a look at the cooling tower that collapsed at least and I think we'll wrap this video up from there all we need to do, Mrs H, is make our way back through this smelly, stagnant water. Oh, I've already got a foot full of it anyway, so let's go. You've got a little bit of the Mersey in you. Oh, lovely. Because that is where they got all the water from. They pulled it out of the River Mersey, apparently. Right then, let's make our way back. Look at that. So what, Potters, we've made it to that little clearing. This is as good as it's going to get because, unfortunately, all the way down, 
just trees have sprung up since that photograph was taken in 2016 that I saw on Google Maps. Anyway, we're now at the back of Fiddler's Ferry Power Station. And these cooling towers here, that's directly in front of the camera, those are the ones that we were stood in front of at the beginning of this video. And the one that collapsed, I believe, is the nearest one to you on the right hand side. That's the one that blew down in those high winds back in 1984. Now what they're going to do with this old site, they're going, it's going to take four years, Mrs H, to demolish it, to completely remove everything. And then what they will do, they will start building on it. Peel NRE, they bought the old site afterwards once the, the last power company sold it off and they're going to demolish it. Hopefully it'll be a big boon to the people of Warrington, but just like with people in Wigan, you sort of miss it because it's there and it's always been there. But I think people will miss it. It'll so change the skyline, won't it? It certainly will. It certainly will. Now, the Central Electricity Board had it built originally. Cleveland Bridge built the power station, as I say, back in the 1960s. And once the power station and the national grid basically became privatised in 1990, it got sold off to a private company. And I think that's when things started going downhill, personally, once you put it into private hands, because then you're shareholders and all that kind of business. And... I also think, Mrs H, that the way we're going, we're relying more and more on electricity. We are going to regret closing these things. I know they're not green and all that business, but it's one of those things. If we need the power, then we need the power stations, don't we? Mm -hmm. Anyway, folks, leave your comments below as always. We're going to get out of here now because there's lots of bitey things. And let Mrs H get out of here because you really don't like trees and stuff, do you? No. So, folks, until the next time, from myself, Mr H... Mrs H and little Toby James at the back of Fiddler's Ferry Power Station it is. Bye bye for now. Fire now, fire now.